Yep. <clears throat> okay, so welcome everybody. Uh, right now, we are going to go through on how to make shingles inside the game. And it's kind of funny because the way we, uh, what we've been doing all night is playing around trying to figure out how to do it. <laughs> and um, with the help of um, 80, from the help of Cody, uh, pretty much the people you see right here, including Jello, he kind of showed up at last there, but it's all good. Um, but um, it's funny how complicated it got for us. We went over to Bride's house and was like, you know, looking at his shingles and like, man, that's some cool stuff. Let's see if we can make that. And that's how it all started. And um, so we came over and then we got into Voxelmancy, trying to make these stupid things. And to no avail, because it was too difficult to be able to get the exact shape that we were looking for. And we had a brain fart in the middle of doing all that experimentation that why are we trying this? Why don't we do use something that we already know how to make, how, how to uh, be able to affect and be able to manipulate. And that kind of goes back to the uh, video that was re that we uh, recently put out, which was this right here. Uh, the thin lattice, you know, varying shape lattice work that we had kind of put out the other day. And that's pretty much where it, it kind of kicked off from because we can duplicate that. We can do it every single time like this. And so we started experimenting and this is the stuff that we came out with. We've got varying end shapes uh, for our little tile sections. We've got this overlap with this very nice little gapping between each one of the voxels. We come over here, you can see the overlay, which could be used for like a more modern look. We've got this here, which uh, is a straight on. It has a, a slight little overlay. And these are all different variations that we put together just in that short period of time of doing our little trials. And um, hopefully I can get up here and show you this last one here. And this is another one. And you know, of course, we painted it all different colors and shapes and textures and stuff like that. But you kind of get the idea of what we were able to accomplish and how you use this within your build. It's up to you. And of course, it's going to be some tinkering on your part to make sure it fits your particular build the way you want it to fit. But we're going to go through that uh, technique and actually show you how to create what we just created. Um, we're going to start out with making some mega voxels and uh, for this I'm going to create the biggest mega voxel I can possibly make here on the show that you can be able to see and I'm going to pop these down onto the ground these four voxels I'm going to select all four of them and I'm going to take my smooth tool and I'm going to pound the poop out of it until I get them to where they almost disappear just about like that and I know it's kind of hard to see, but yes, there are voxels in this little selected area. I'm going to go back to my selection tool now. Scroll out. Control C to copy. I'm going to hit the delete key so I don't have them things floating around and trying to disturb me here. But I'm going to take those four, and it's very hard to see on my screen, but I'm going to paste these right in the same location as these top voxels. Uh, on this reactor here and like I said uh, it's probably going to be my downfall trying to get this thing lined up but hopefully I can get it in there it may take me two or three attempts until I get it right but uh, we're gonna try it hey first time go all right we're good <clears throat> now I'm going to do this again for the bottom so and that's hopefully if I can get this thing lined back up and getting it into where we need it. And I think I'm pretty much set on it there. There. Okay. Now that is a very big microvoxel, and that's probably about the biggest megavoxel that I can actually create without going into the land of roaming vectors and all that kind of stuff. 
And this is the shape that we're going to be using here, okay? I'm going to make a copy out of this, control C. I'm going to bring it over here into our open work area. And I'm going to put 10 of these in a row. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I put 10 of these in a row here. Now, that's the first one. We're going to make two of these. So hang tight. We're going to come back over here to this. And this time, I'm going to make another copy of the four on the top. Control C to copy. Control V to paste. Bring this up. Paste. Select all of them. And I'm going to smooth this one. One, two, three. And I'm just going to leave it at three. Should be fine. Selection tool, control C. And let's go ahead and get rid of those while I'm here. Control V to paste. Let's pop this in. Oops. I didn't see that. There's the top. There's the bottom. And there's the next one. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Control C. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put 10 of these in a row. All right, let's bring this over. Let me get this thing lined up first. And uh, hopefully we can get these pretty much on cue with each other so you can kind of see them side by side. There's one. Oops, back up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we got all ten of those in a row now. <clears throat> now, where we're going to start at is we're going to take our line tool to the first one. Now remember, this is the bigger one. This is the smaller one. And um, for this bigger one, I'm going to take my line tool, increase it up to a three voxel by three voxel size for the line tool. I'm going to click this very last one, come around to the other side, and click the very last one on the opposing face over here. So click. I'm also going to do the same thing to this one here. Click one on the very last, come down to the very end on this end, and click on the very last. Boom. The next thing we're those are, opposing sides. Uh, those are opposing sides and we're going to take our paint tool now and I'm going to grab a darker color so we can actually paint these voxels here. We're going to come to the very last one, paint, one, two, paint, one, two, paint, one, two, paint, one, two, paint, one, okay, should be at the end there, okay. Um, but that paints the first one. Now let's go to the second one. Paint, 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 paint. And you can see the shape of them are pretty much exactly the same. There's nothing different in between the two of them. Just remember that this one is a smaller megavoxel than the one we have here. That's the first step, okay? Or Actually, it's probably around the third, but hopefully you'll get the idea. We're not done yet. After I've painted it, we have to go to the next part, which is taking the line tool, go back to our three by three. We're gonna click on that first voxel. And we're gonna click the first voxel. Go to the opposing face side, bring it down to the last one, but back it off by one voxel back inwards like this and click we're going to do that to this other side as well last voxel go to the opposing face back side go to the last one back it off one voxel and click now the shapes that we have actually created here are just a tad bit different than normal uh, than what you would normally expect here is because we've kind of compressed it a little bit 
and but this is kind of what we've pulled out of here and hopefully if everything copy I think it's this one I'm trying to find this voxel. Do you see it, Aiden? I think it's I think it's the right one you have. The first one? Or the second one? Or is or is it this big one? It must be this big one here. It's the white ones in the middle. Okay. Well, we're going to pull that one out anyway, and we're going to bring this up, and we're going to work with this one. Um, depending on the angle at what you're trying to get for your particular, you know, roofing little shingles is basically what we're after, okay? Um, it's all about experimentation to find out exactly which one you're, you're kind of after here, but for this uh, particular example, I'm just going to pull out that one right there. And of course, that's the one from the small side. And before I do that, I want to bring some of these reactors over here because we're going to be using these here in a moment to show um, how to manipulate these just slightly. Okay, and that's way that way you'll know how to approach them on um, changing the sizes and and playing with it up and down and, and that sort of uh, nature. And that's what these two reactors are going to be for. Um, first, we're going to take this one right here. I'm going to grab that one right there. And that is actually the white one right here between those two black ones that I'm grabbing. And I'm going to paste it right into this reactor. Rotate it. paste. Okay. Now you can kind of see the shape that's being formed inside that reactor. Um, this is going to make it a little bit easier for us to, to kind of play with later. So uh, I'm going to grab that same one, that white one between the two black ones right here, and I'm going to do it the same way over here on this side. Now, when you look at them, there's really not much of a difference, but if you look at it really closely, you'll notice that this one is is not as wide as the one that's over here. So you can actually kind of uh, play with this in um, many different ways, um, depending on what your particular build is going to be like. But this one right here, this is the thin one. If I paste this one up into the air, and put them side by side. I go up one, back one, oops, excuse me, back two, and then kind of, I don't say it, back up one, back two, and then over one, sorry, and then start pasting these out like this. You can kind of see what we're kind of forming here, that shingled look. Go up one, back two, over one. Repeat the process until you kind of made you a little sectional there, but you've got this, um, this shaping kind of going on here, right? And this is how you get your different gapping. This gapping is determined by that that uh, shape, that sizing that's right here that we used for to make the smaller megavoxel. Now if I come over to the really big one that we created the first time, which is this one right here, let's do that same exact process. <clears throat> I'm going to copy that one out, paste it, pull it up into the air, and I'm going to do put it exactly in the same location as the one that I had before. Go up one, back two, over one. Repeat the process, uh, stacking them out, and I think I've almost got it there. Up one, 
back to over one stack. Okay, now notice that how thin of a gap that is on this one. This is the one that we made as big as we possibly could because we shrunk down these, these corners as small as we possibly could. And because of that, we're going to get this really small, thin gap here. Now, playing around with this, you can come up with different ways that this is kind of like playing out um, and whatnot. Now, if you notice, we've got a thick system here, and we've got a thin part here. Say I want that back section to be like this, but I want the front of it to have this little gapping like this. So I can mix and match between the two. So this one right here is the bottom face of this voxel. If I copy this original, which is this one here, copy this one, I paste it down, pull it up into the air here, I want to grab this one because I know that the width of this one is, is, is tinier. So I can grab this one now, here to here, control C to copy, and I'll paste it onto the bottom of the big one because it has the top that I want, but I want the bottom from the other. Paste that in. I copy this one, copy. And now let's repeat that same process that we did with those two and see what comes out. There's one. And hopefully I can get my camera over here. Two, three, four, five, up one, back two, over one, repeat the process, up one, back two, over one. So now I, I have this, this back sy system that actually comes into a point and it closes off those little gaps a little bit for me. And then the bottom, I have it spread out like this. So I've got little feelers coming out and I can adjust those in and out depending on the mega voxel shape that I used originally. And so the, the variance that you can create with this is gonna be pretty astounding and you can probably come out with some really crazy stuff. And depending on what voxel you pull out of here, each of these angles may be slightly different. So you'll get a very big variance depending on which voxel you pull out. I use that same one on each of these two sections on the same length of a section. So I know that that angle is pretty much dead on. It's just the thinness may be a little bit different. Okay. Now, like I said, there's a lot of different variants, different things you can do with it. And that kind of falls back into this right here. Uh, this is one, this is a voxel that was pulled out of a, um, another section. And we've got this almost futuristic look here. This looks like more modern uh, type tiling. So you, in that gapping on it is a little bit different than the ones we did before. Uh, that was because we pulled a voxel off of um, my voxel, um, micro the mega voxel board, and we used it for its creation. So that gapping is a little differently. If you notice the gapping on all this is pretty much the same, that's because we used the same voxels um, uh, for the experimentation. And, but just doing that overlay, you know, we came up with all these different, uh, you know, variants and it's pretty much up to you for you to kind of experiment and to, to figure out exactly what shape but hopefully this will guide you in the right direction for something that is repeatable something that you can do every single time and be able to show it uh, to your neighbor and hopefully um, help create something that's pretty awesome across the board